Hello everyone, it is August 25th, 2020. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. So today I just wanted to talk to you about how I'm notating lever changes at the moment. So of course I just published a number of pieces and some of them with quite a few lever changes. And over the years I've come up with a system that I'm currently pretty happy with. And I wanted to describe that to you and demonstrate that to you. So I use Finale as my notation software. And what I'm looking for then is something that's very clear for, for the player, right? When you see these, these indicated, but also something that's as easy as possible to enter, to do in Finale. So it's, it's, it's actually, there's a bit of a, it's a bit of a challenge potentially on, on the lever harp. So let's take, for example, let's suppose we have, uh, and suppose that we we need to change that C to sharp. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Well, of course, we could just write in C sharp. Maybe when we want to change it right here. But the, then the problem is, what C are we changing? Well, of course, in this case, I mean, it's kind of clear that it's there. But what if there was some other C sharp happening? And maybe this one we changed earlier, and we it was actually referring to uh, uh, maybe, you know, this, um, this C is becoming sharp, right? So on the pedal harp, of course, we could, we could say C sharp and that's a C sharp pedal change wherever we want to do it, maybe right here. And that's, there's only one possibility, but on the lever harp, there's all these different C's. So you could use scientific notation, right? Which would, if it was this one up here, that would be a C5, um, like C5 sharp, um, C4 is middle, C, numbers go up and then or down if we're going lower. The problem with that is, and again, maybe I'm biased because for me, I don't automatically know those. Like if I see F6, uh, I mean, I guess it's this one way up here, but I have to think, I have to translate that a little bit in my head. And I think there are many people who might have to look it up. They wouldn't know, like C5, what does that mean, even mean? You know, this, this idea of scientific notation is a way of, of like precisely notating what C you mean on the staff. And maybe I'm wrong, but to me, I'd, I'd, I'd rather rely on something that is has to do with the staff, because if you're reading this music, you know how to read notes on the staff. You don't necessarily know scientific notation. Um, same as saying uh, the octave. So I'm used to octaves on the pedal harp, because that's how the the strings are like when you buy strings that's how they're labeled so that this particular c up here would be a third octave c you can say third octave of course you can see that's getting c sharp it's getting a little bit messy because lots of text and also even though i'm familiar with that i'd have to think now third octave let me see which octave exactly is that i think it's this one but let me just double check terrible especially if you're trying to sight read so what i would prefer to do and let me just uh, get rid of this what I would prefer to do is have a nice visual representation. So uh, let's actually get back that C sharp so that eventually that's not how we're gonna be doing it, but C sharp. So if I want this to change here, right? Because maybe the left hand's busy playing a note right here. Oh, uh, yeah, well, whatever, I'm busy playing a note right there. And then it's gonna change it and then we're gonna be able to play it. So I could put it right there and then I could draw a line from that to the note. So I go over here, grab my line tool and draw a line. And again, I could zoom in, a right click on Windows will let me scroll around and I could tweak the position. If I double click here, if I then can click. So if I have this selected, there will be two little extra selectors up here and I could instead click one of them and therefore drag this part of it around I want to just like tweak how it looks. Um, bit of an annoyance potentially. It's not like one click and you're done, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and so there, then I think that looks looks reasonable, looks fairly clear in terms of what it is we're doing, right? And again, I think that's fairly clear. Okay, we're gonna change that C. Now, ideally though, I would also like to include a diamond shape or so if we're doing this like 
let's suppose in fact that the left hand is busy and is playing I don't know playing notes on the first two beats and we're actually changing this right as as we play it then I might do something like uh, maybe something like this right there's not room for a little diamond shape but in general what I would like to do is I would like to uh, have a little diamond shape showing what note it is that we're changing so again if we go back to this idea that maybe we're changing it on the second beat I could potentially do this right and, and yeah that. Now, this is particularly effective and necessary if, for example, maybe this, maybe this C sharp change that we're doing is not until uh, later on, right? Uh, I guess then this couldn't be this, but uh, let's say that this is, um, and and then maybe right here we have this C sharp, right? So, yeah, in which case maybe if we're trying to change this on the second beat, I might move this over here a little bit. I think visually that looks a little bit, I think visually that looks a little bit better. But, you know, in this case, again, if I put a C sharp here, it, we don't have this reference, so we do have to have some indication. And if I try to draw a line from this all the way over to there, that gets a little bit messy. Right, it's not not ideal. So I think the diamond shape is great then, and and then just whenever possible, whenever it's not too cramped, I like to include this diamond shape these days. Uh, just and 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 in general, right? That diamond shape is a very commonly used symbol for lever changes. So it's great to have it there. It kind of keys us into the fact. Oh, it's a lever change, and it shows us exactly where on the staff it is. So. To me, I really like the combination of both of these. The C sharp, again, partly maybe because I'm coming from the pedal harp background and used to seeing pedal changes and having, again, like a letter name alerting me to the fact that there's something going on in terms of modulation, to have this, but also have the diamond shape. Now, it's, of course, you will in some music see maybe that diamond shape uh, with, uh, I guess we'll just do it this way, with uh an accidental marking in front of it right so with a sharp in this case so right with a blink point so you could have that it takes up a little bit more room on the staff it's also not i don't i haven't come up with an easy way to do that it's a bit of a pain to try and like to type it in and adjust it and it's not attached to this diamond shape um, intrinsically so i think that does make it again let's say we have this and this i think that in fact is perhaps the most clear way we could do this but uh, for now, I'm I'm happy enough just with the uh, with the diamond shape. So, how do I do it then? Um, so the first step is to create a library that has all the possible lever changes. So I'm going to load library. I'm going to load a library of, of pedal changes. Uh, I think that was the wrong one, but does actually change. This one. And now with my expression tool, when I click anywhere, I will have an option of pedal markings with all the different possible pedal markings, some of those not relevant to lever changes. So then I can choose, for example, C sharp, and there it is. I don't have to type it in, use the text tool. This is just a faster and more effective way. So if you want to set that up, you would go to edit categories under your dynamic designer. You could duplicate one of them. Let's say we want to duplicate, I don't know, dynamics, whatever makes more sense. Let's say tempo markings we duplicate it we could call it lever lever changes um maybe not bold i kind of prefer maestro times these days uh let's try that um there we are and then in that category we could create a lever change we could say c sharp you can either use the number sign shift three on on windows that there's a shortcut control shift s for sharp will give us a special sharp sign a finale font sharp sign uh, control shift n will be natural and control shift f for flat will be a flat sign so 
let's say we wanted to control uh, C natural, control shift N, and then assign. Oh, uh, okay. So there we, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have duplicated the um the the position the temple marks because it positions it um up above. Uh, anyway, you can you can mess around with that, but um, I'm just going to use these petal markings. Right, so there we are. If, if we had a natural later on, we got that, or a flat, or whatever. So again, let's suppose we're trying to put a C sharp right there. So I have this, I have this, but I'm not gonna draw this line yet. And that's a, that's part of our smart shape tools, right? I'm gonna put this diamond shape on there. So that's an articulation. By default, the hotkey for that is H, so I can hold down H and click on a note. I have to click on a note, unlike the expression tool where I can click anywhere on the page. I'll click on this, doesn't really matter. Then I get this diamond shape. Now, you're going to notice some interesting behavior because it's avoiding the staff, the lines of the staff. We actually want to uncheck avoid staff lines, right? Because we want to be able to position it anywhere, right? If it's an F, we want to be able to position it over F. In this case, if we want to position it over C, there we are. So we position that. Then I go over, select my line tool, draw a line, boop, over there. Or in fact, we're probably going to be changing, try to change it on a beat. So I might position this here if that's where we're going to change it, using the text to indicate exactly where we're changing it, and the diamond shape in the line to indicate what lever it is. But it could we could move a little bit like to the right or to the left. And there we go. So that that's uh, now oh, one last thing. Suppose that we wanted instead to have this middle C sharp. So we drag this down to what looks like about the position of. So here's a like here's a D. Here's a middle C. Say something like that. Get our line tool. So oh, hold Shift before we click. Double click to start it. Pull it to the right. Shift will make it so that it is perfectly straight. Finish. And then we'll probably have to zoom in and just tweak the uh, adjustment of these. So it's a little bit of a pain, um, but there we go. And then of course we might, in this case, draw a little nice little line there. There we are. So a few steps, right? It's not it's not super easy, but it's not super hard either. And, and again, I'm pretty happy with that with that workflow. Um, and it's, it's worked really nicely. I, I wanna mention, so one other option, right? And one I have previously used, but it's actually pretty, the workflow is not so great, is to use uh, a secondary layer, right? So suppose we wanted to display, now it does let you display the sharp or flat or whatever sign. So let's say we go to our second layer, we put a rest, which we're gonna hide, H, and then maybe we wanna change it right here, we're gonna put a C sharp, which of course will get us a sharp symbol, and then maybe rest for the rest of it. We'll have to go back and hide that H so that it's it's there, but it's not going to print when we go to print this to PDF or to paper. It won't be there. So now we have this sharp symbol there, and we have to change it to look the way we want it to, right? Um, uh, let me delete some of this other stuff. Oops. Delete. So we're going to go over to our, to our uh, special tools, what are these? Um, tools, advanced tools, special tools, but I have them permanently displayed over here. We're going to click on this funny little star thing, which is our uh, which is our note shape tool. And then well, we're back on layer one. We'll get to layer two, double click this note, and we're going to find that diamond shape. Uh, which I think that one's too big, right? I think that's the one that's too big. I don't normally do it this way. So it always takes a moment scrolling. There we are, 225 on my version of Finale at least. Double click that. Now we still have the stem. So we're gonna go down and find, and I can never find this stem tool, custom stem tool, custom stem tool. This is it, this weird little one right here. Double click. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom. Oh, we're gonna say create. We're gonna leave this blank. Now we have just a blank thing and we're gonna select that and that gets rid of the stem, right? So now we have this. It's great if it's right on, if we want it just right in rhythm there, that looks nice. But 
again, you could see it's a whole bunch of steps. And what if we wanted it offset, right? What, right if it was interfering with what was going on? Well, we could drag, right? We could, I'm not sure why our, our, our sharp symbol should be moving. Oh, it does that way. Interesting. It doesn't come. Okay, this is trying to avoid the collision. Let's suppose we're way up here and we try and drag. No, it just won't. Well, so you can see like it's a, it's a possible solution, but it's, it's a little annoying. So, and it's very, to my mind, quite time consuming. Now I do use one last trick. Let me just show you before we go in terms of at the very beginning. So let's uh, just clear these. Um, in order to show the starting lever changes, if there's some starting lever changes, what I do is, I'll, let's say we're in 4.4, I'll often create this first bar, so just measure one through one, down to one, one, but have a display as 4.4, just so it's a short bar. Let's say we wanna start with that middle C is sharp, because in this case, I do wanna, I do wanna have both the, the accidental sign and the little diamond shape. Um, or let's suppose we have two C sharps, so I'm gonna boop, put them on there, great. Again, they're only a quarter note, that's a full bar. This one, I'm gonna put a quarter note rest and I'm gonna hide that, H. Um, oh, sorry, we're in layer two, but we should be in layer one, doesn't really matter, that's why this is red. Um, so then I will do that same process. I'll go here to the notes, the note tool. Uh, what do we say, 225. So we scroll down to that and we have to do that for this one as well, down to 225. And then this special uh, custom stem, double click on that, go down. Blank, there we are, looking good. One last step, we go to our measure tool. We right click, oh, yeah, we select this, right click on it, bar line, invisible. Various ways you can get to that, but you're looking for an invisible bar line. We can still move this, so we can move this even closer. And now, when we're here and we're starting our piece, um, Well, and the annoying thing is, at least for me, I haven't figured out a way for it to not reset this. So that's kind of the last thing you want to do before printing it is to maybe drag this invisible bar line a little bit closer so we don't have a ton of extra time. But now, right, and then you can write a little note um, either with a text tool or ideally with the expression tool. Um, so we could do like technique text, for example, create set to C sharps. Uh, whoop, assign, drag this in position, and there we have this nice little diamond shape at the beginning letting us know what's what's going on. So anyway, hope that, I hope that was interesting and gives you an idea. Again, we're, we're faced with a little bit of a challenge with lever changes to indicate exactly where they are without taking up too much visual space. And again, one of the things I would want to avoid is is to make sure that the lever changes. So if you're only using the diamond shapes to indicate lever changes, potentially they end up having to take up some space so that visually the rhythm of the piece is is maybe obscured, is not, like maybe we, we have a bunch of lever changes in between these two notes. And so that means that they end up uh, like stretched quite a bit, right? That we fit these two lever changes in there, but now it looks like it's boom, 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 instead of boom, 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 boom. Uh, so that's where, if there's not much room to put the diamond shape in, I'll just draw a line to those notes, assuming that works, right? Um, but otherwise, I'll try to put both the line, the diamond shape, and the and the nice um, indication in the middle of, uh, middle of the staff, or above the staff if it's a right-hand lever change, to show to show the lever change. So again, I hope that was interesting and useful. Um, and I will see you in two weeks time. Cheers.